Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Saturday Morning Cartooning, the show in which we take a look at cartoon characters from yesterday as well as today, learn a bit about their history and the creators behind them, and then learn to draw them together. On today's show, we're going to do the impossible, and we're going to cover one of the greatest crime fighters of the early 2000s, Kim Possible. Kim Possible was an animated comedy action show on the Disney Channel that originally aired between 2002 and 2007. The show follows the adventures of Kim Possible, an ordinary American teenager with extraordinary abilities as a crime fighter. Kim Possible, along with her friend Ron Stoppable, Ron's pet mole rat Rufus, and computer genius Wade, help keep the world safe from villains like Dr. Draken and Shigo. Created by Disney writers Bob Schooley and Mark McCorkle, Kim Possible is significant in that it spearheaded a movement toward positive female-led animated shows that appeal to girls as well as boys. Schooley and McCorkle worked on previous Disney animated shows that were geared towards male characters like Aladdin, Hercules, and Buzz Lightyear of Star Command. Kim Possible is considered a parody of everything from spy movies like James Bond 007, superhero shows, and even teen sitcoms. Schooley and McCorkle credit the creation of Kim Possible with the influx of female-led action shows and movies from the early 2000s, like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Alias, Powerpuff Girls, and Laura Croft Tomb Raider. Kim's high-octane adventures contrast sharply with her everyday teenager life. Her everyday teen struggles were inspired by the creator's teenage high school experiences, as well as that of their daughters. The character design and the look of the show with big heads and large round eyes was based on the campy retro feel of the 60s and 70s, especially that of spy films and the futuristic look of the Jetsons with smooth, curvilinear lines. Kim Possible set the tone for other female-led action shows where the heroine is much more than just a damsel in distress. Okay, let's get started with Kim Possible. Make sure you have your paper ready, a pencil that you like, an eraser that you like, your inking marker, and we're going to be needing colors today orange for her hair, I'm going to use orange marker. Uh, we're going to need black for her shirt, gray for her pants. We're going to need a brown for her belt, skin tone, and lip color. We're also going to need a little bit of blue for her eyes. Let's take a look at the reference photo. What's really cool about this design is that it's actually quite simple. It looks complicated. Her body position is pretty complicated. Again, this is a great example of foreshortening. This fist is coming out towards the viewer, but we get only the illusion of length. It actually looks drawn a little stubby. Um, and she's got this really cool swoop body line, this action movement. Uh, so let's try to render that in some basic shapes first. Her head is um, just a circle. Uh, it's slightly larger than a realistic, realistically rendered human, but it's, a, it's still just a, a circle. Her hair is going to be behind everything else, so just start with a circle for right now. Um, her body, like we said, is going to have this swooping motion, so we're going to just lightly sketch in that's her shoulder, that's where it's going to come out later on, but we're going to do the body first. This is her upper torso, going right into the leg coming out this way. She's got almost like, she's wearing cargo pants. And then the other leg is going to stop and bend in the opposite direction. going to be an arm over here, which we're just going to put, it's going to be bent in on itself. So we're just going to put this line right here for um, for now. But before we do anything, let's get this, this arm taken care of. Again, this is that foreshortened arm. It's going to go up. There's her shoulder. A little bit of extension for the arm. Again, it's foreshortened. A bump for her forearm. And then she's all fist. So it's sort of like this wonky rectangle shape. It's going to be, that's going to be her main pointer finger, right? And then all the fingers after that are all going to be contained in, inside this one shape. So pointer finger, 
other fingers falling in line and then this is going to be her thumb coming down and bending back up towards the fist. Okay, And she's got this reverse cuff um, gloves. So she's going to have almost like a little half oval right here connecting to this. We'll put a little notch in there. If you want you can erase that. And that's going to be her glove. That's the, the arm that's coming out at the viewer. And then the arm goes right back towards the body. Okay, let's get this arm in, or this hand in. Uh, this hand is going to basically just be like this flat disc shape. She's got one thumb coming out this way. It's as if she's blocking a punch. All right, we see this finger almost in its entirety. But then the rest, again, like this hand, are all going to be contained inside this one with a little line for the palm of the hand. You'll be able to see that better once we ink it. Okay, and same thing, she's going to have like this reverse cuff glove with a notch in it. And then this is going to be her forearm. Let's clean up this shape a little bit. It's going to taper outwards towards the elbow, which is what this is. And this will go down a little bit more. It's really um, important to get those angles in. She's a lot of angles. Let's take a look at the reference photo. She's got these really cool stylized angles all over the place, even in her hair. Um, and you'll see it down here as well. Looks swoopy, like the lines are very smooth and swoopy, but there's lots of angles. Look at how her leg bends down this way and then juts back this way. The way the, uh, all the weight is put on the front of her foot over here and her uh, foot is like bending. Really severe angles right there. All right, let's start rendering some of her clothes. Now this is gonna be her torso going down She's got a very, very thin waist. Let's clean up that line. Could taper her waist a little bit. Now, she's wearing cargo pants that look like they're a little bit too big for her. So it's actually gonna come out from her torso right here. This is why it's important to draw lightly is you need to alter your lines. All right. Her pants swoop this way, and then she's got a belt swooping the other way. So her belt is sort of like slack on her hip. And she's got this cargo pocket that pretty much floats right off the edge of the pants. Got a pocket on it with a button, and then we can finish her utility belt, just like Batman. Let's all have these little pouches with buttons on them. Okay. This is the knee that bends and goes down. She's got these. Um, these cargo pants that are almost like parachute pants. If you've ever seen the Disney movie Aladdin, they all have these puffy pants, almost like Princess Jasmine's pants. All right, there's another pocket on there with a button. And then this is where her foot is going to bend. So her foot is going to come off the bot, the cuff of these pants, and then it's going to bend. This all of her weight is on this one foot, and then it bends back up. Okay. Then 
then the other foot is just going to come right out this way. Very simple feet design. button of her pants right there all right she's got a bit of a crop top she so got her belly button showing that makes an angle right here that's where her sleeve is going to be and this is where her other sleeve is going to be. So this is going to be flesh tone when we color, and this is going to be flesh tone when we color. Let's get the face in there. Um, she's got a three-quarter side view face, so her face lines are going to be angled slightly. And she's got these big eyes, one on either side of the vertical face line, one here and then one here. Now this eye is where we're going to sprout out her nose, she's got just this little angle shape right there. And then her smile is just this angular, almost like a teardrop with a smaller shape that's gonna remain white inside. This'll be red, this'll be white. And then she's got a suggestion of a lip right there. The pupils are looking this way, so they're going to be on this side of each eye with a black pupil. Okay, her ear is going to be tucked behind this bit of hair that's going to be um, turning in. creating a part. Now her part is going to be right here and then all her hair is going to be behind her head. Actually before we do that let's draw in this ear. We're only seeing one ear. And all of her hair is going to be behind her. So from here it's going to swoop around. Um, just follow your pencil. We're going to be skipping this section oh, that's going to be behind her body and then it's going to come out here. And then the other piece is going to swoop around this way. It'll start going in towards her head. And then it's going to start moving towards this point that we ended right here. All right. She has some texture lines in there. And this bang is going to cut off part of the eye. Not a lot on my particular drawing. And then that's going to create another line going that way. Okay, she's got this arched eyebrow, which is black right here. And the other one, we don't see because it's behind her hair. All right. Let's just clean up that line so we know which one to ink later on. But her head is still going to be based on that original circle shape. There's going to be a little suggestion of a neck right there. Okay. We're ready to start inking. I think a fine point will do just fine today. So let's do uh, the thing that comes out at the viewer first, which is actually going to be the hand. So let's do this hand that's going to be cutting off her part of her head. And 
it's important, especially with this character, to keep your inking lines nice and smooth. She has very uh, swoopy lines. So as best as you can, have a little line confidence and do a, a, a smooth inking job. Although that is still difficult, even for me. Trying to keep the line smooth. And I'm stopping right there with the hair because I want to do this shoulder first. So let's get, that's the neck. There's the shoulder into the forearm. This whole side of the body is just one long line. Okay. I am gonna do this line for this part of the arm. And that's her cuff. All of this later on is going to be uh, black, but we'll wait on that. Let's do everything else. I'm not going to be inking in that black line for the um, for the blue just yet. I might add it in later, depending on how it looks. But I think a uh, uninked line between the white of the eye and the blue of the eye might look better. But we'll see when we get closer to that. The same thing with the mouth. I don't want to ink that unless I really think I need to. I might even end up doing an ultra fine point on that, but we will see as we get closer. Um, what we should do right now is erase our original pencil lines, but because we're not inking those eye lines and mouth lines, try to avoid the eyes and the mouth. should ink in this side of the head. Try to get in between those face lines without erasing the mouth. a bunch of lines today. A whole foot. Okay. 
Let's see if we need to ink those eyes and the mouth. I'm going to add some blue for her eye here and here. I think it looks pretty good without it. So let's, for right now, keep it that way. And the lips as well. Yeah, right now it looks good. But I might want to go back in and do the um, the inking of the mouth, at least. Let's go ahead and do the skin tone. Parts of the skin showing are her face, her forearms, and the midriff. Okay. Let's just add a little bit more depth to that eyebrow. There we go. That looks good. Let's put in the yellow, I'm sorry, the orange of the hair. Which is pretty much the character defining color. She's got this bright orange head of hair. Let's put in some of those lines in the hair, here, here, and there, okay? We need brown for her belt, just the belt, not the pocket. Gray for her pants. Okay, we need black for her shirt, and we're pretty much just going to use our permanent marker. Just be careful when you're drawing with this. Especially if you're using a lot of it, it could um, bleed through. 
and stain whatever you're drawing on. So make sure you have a couple of sheets of paper underneath or some sort of placemat. And uh, two, make sure that you have this, that you do this in a well-ventilated area because permanent marker has a bit of an odor to it. However, if you have a black Crayola marker, you can do that, use that as well. Definitely less danger of it getting on things. Crayola markers are watercolor based, so the um, ink will wash off. darker gray for her gloves. Kids, Kim Possible.